Hello and welcome to my introduction to CryEngine 3 tutorial. Today we're going to cover the UI and some of the tools that are available in this software package. So if we get right to it, we're going to start with the basics. Let's talk about placing objects. So we have over here on our roll-up bar, we have our objects tab, our terrain tab, our render settings, and I don't really know exactly what it's called, but we'll call it the render settings tab and then our layers tab. Let's start over here in the objects tab or if you were to compare it to 3ds max it would be the create tab. So we have our geometric entity entities and we have some that I have made here. So we're going to drag over a whipped cream can and you can see that when I'm placing it it will go on top of objects, go on top of the terrain. Well you have to set that specifically. So there is the up here in our little toolbar we've got the um, follow terrain option which means that this object will always be placed on terrain we have the one where the object will be placed upon objects and terrain and then we have the x and y which is the x and y axis and then the z and then the x or the y so we're going to use the follow terrain one for now or the follow terrain and objects we're going to place it up here as you can see it's missing a tutorial it says replace me and what we're going to do is we're going to open up our material editor which is used by clicking up here in the upper right hand corner and we can look and navigate through some of the materials that they already have in the SDK so if we go to uh, let's say props mine now let's go to Let's just assign this basic Canon one that I made and it's not working. So you can see that you can right click assign to a selected object in the material editor. You can navigate through it to find the things that you want. For example, we could use this brick texture and assign that to our bottle. We could go and actually find the one that I made for it and it will allow us to add materials to our objects. There are ways to do it so that it automatically adds the material itself. Um, by pressing 1 on the keyboard we can move an object around using the move tool. 2 will turn on the rotate tool and 3 will turn on the scale tool. So let's just move that over here. Again you won't be following along but you will be understanding the basis of this tutorial. So we're going to close out of this Oh, before, I, before we close out of it, there's a lot of very important options inside of here, such as the opacity settings, and it allows us to really refine our material and how it works and how it looks. That's something we'll get into in a later lesson, because it's a much more comprehensive tutorial. Um, if we go into our roll-up bar again, we have things such as entities we can place. If we wanted to, we could place a new light and as you can see it actually does light the scene you can set some options for it to do things such as cast shadows and then now it will cast shadows upon objects and then we can, cl right, we can click delete and then there's lots of other things in there we won't really cover right now but you basically get the uh, the whole main idea of it and then we have the train with the train rollout tab we can do things such as flatten, smooth, raise, lower, and then we can pick the height of the terrain and then it will be applied to our other brushes or it can be applied. So now it gave us this and then we can just copy it over to here and then suddenly the terrain will be that height or be raised that height depending on what tool you're using. We can generate mini maps we can use a move area to move a certain amount of terrain, the voxel editor for creating um, caves and all sorts of other things. We have the vegetation painter tool, which allows us to paint objects into our scene. We have this with the render settings, which allows us to turn off clouds, turn on clouds, and really anything else that you want to turn on. We can look at our wireframe to see what the polygons look like and just to check out the wireframe of any object. We can use the point mode or sorry, yeah, point mode. I really don't understand the point of that. 
not to make a pun. And then there's also the solid. Um, let's say you wanted to get rid of all of these helpers over here, or these little tiny, tiny guys that have all these, this clutter to your scene. If you want to check it out, how it would look in game, press Shift Space. Now, just to, if you want to go and actually try to play your level, press Control G, and we can now play inside the editor. Press Escape to exit. Um, a few more things when we're placing objects or if we're moving objects around. We can select an object and use the snap to grid. It's helpful if you're making modular terrain or really any, any it's just, it's, it can be helpful for getting exact coordinates, I guess you could say. So we're going to disable that for now. There's also the angle snap. So if you're rotating something, it snaps to a specific angle allowing you to be a little bit more even with your angles and to potentially align a specific group of objects at a specific angle. Um, up here in our upper right hand corner we have the database view which allows us to view our entities so if we click this load button we can load the marine entity with the life, the life belt and we can place that in our scene and allows us to take a, a good look at all of the things that we have inside of our level. We have the prefab library. So for example, a prefab would be if I wanted to make this hut and all of the objects inside of it a prefab, it would allow me to make it instead of having to select all these objects and manually place them or clone them, just drag and drop a whole new instance of it. And it makes for a much better way to populate a giant level. Vegetation, this this tab will allow us to take a look at all of our vegetation objects that we have placed inside of our scene or not even in our scene but just inside of our editor that are ready to be placed inside of our scene. Particle editor is a very powerful particle editing system that allows us to if we wanted for example we could take this fire particle and we could turn off the flames we could turn the amount of particles that are generated up or down and many many other very powerful options and it can do quite a bit of cool things. The music allows you to take a look at the music that comes inside the scene or add music. Reverb presets allow you to change how sound is interacting interacts with your environment. For example if you were indoors and you applied a reverb preset to a specific area shape inside of here it would allow it to be much much it would bounce the sound would bounce off the walls which adds for much more realism. The same as if you were inside of a for example a big building you know, sound bounces off those walls. We'll get into sound moods and game tokens later. Let's take a look at the flow graph editor. The flow graph editor is a kind of comprehensive, well actually it's a very complicated tool at first, but it can do some pretty cool stuff. For example, let's say we want to make a new flow graph and we want to be able to make it so when the player presses N, we can turn on night vision or do something else we could have a start node a local player node and then an input node with the key and then when it's pressed it will turn on Let's see. We would if if we knew the actual night vision code, we would turn it to night vision and then select one. And then we make the key over here N. Um I don't actually know the the C bar for it at the moment, but I can load up one of my other ones that I have. Just to give you an example. It's a very powerful tool that you can use to make quite a few very awesome things for within um, CryEngine. For example here now I have so when I press let's go into our game when I press V it turns on thermal and turns it off when I press Q my time slows down I play a sound that allows the player to realize that their time is being slowed down and turns off motion blur 
If I press H, I can turn my HUD on or off. And it's just a very cool tool and allows you to do a lot more powerful things than just that. That was just a simple example. Um, if we go back into our database view, actually let's not go back into our database view. Um, up here we have the ability to change our graphical details. So if it's running slow, you can turn it to low, medium, or high. Uh, let's see, what else would be important to cover? We could cover making a new level. So let's say you want to make a new level. You see everything I have in here and you want to do something like that. Well this would be a lot of tutorials later but you can also learn by just fiddling around with it. That's really the easiest way to learn. But let's click new. We'll name this level cats2 and then I don't want to save changes to my level. And I'm going to not associate that with any of my projects on crydev.net. So now we have made a level and it's blank. It needs terrain. So let's go to our terrain generator under edit terrain under the terrain button and click generate terrain. The first thing you'll notice right away is that it's very, very mountainy, kind of ridiculous and useless. So what we can do is by either doing it by hand or we can just apply a smooth to it. But we're going to apply it, we're going to smooth this by hand and make it much lower. Actually, you know, we're going to lower this height to 200 and we're going to make it totally flat. So as you can see, all of these, whoops, we're going to want to make this, I apologize, I used the wrong one. We're going to, we're going to make this entire level flat and you can see as we edit the height map inside of the editor, it actually applies it inside of the level. So now we have a flat level that we could actually do stuff with. Um, if you if you wanted, you could import a height map from, say, Mudbox or GeoControl or uh, any other program that you really wanted to make a height map in. There's many, many ways to do it. So if we close out of that, that gave us a basic understanding. We have our time of day editor, which allows us to change the time of day from day to night and change all the factors that go along with that and it's very useful for setting up a scene and controlling your lighting you can control your map orientation or your sun direction where the sun is along the equator or where you're located along the equator you can change lots of other settings in there but we don't need we don't need to go into those right now a few other important and useful tools and tips are under speed it changes how fast that we move around our scene. As you can see now, we're moving so slow it's barely noticeable. We can click 1 a little bit faster, and 10 is really fast. Or we can adjust it manually by pressing, say, 0 0.5, or typing it in there. It would allow us to go move around our scene. So that's pretty much the basics of the CryEngine. There's a lot of other really powerful tools in here that we'll cover a later day. But for now, this should help you get acquainted with it and at least give you a place to start. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and you should add us on Facebook and give me some feedback and tell me what you think we should cover next and how I could have covered this better. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this, and please stay tuned for the next one.